Welcome back, everybody. This is M-Dog, and we're con continuing with another episode here. Uh, haven't done any fishing without you, so, you know, we've missed a couple days. Let me get, uh, get fishing rods in the water here, and then I'll kind of explain why. But All right, so on this first rod, uh, we're using red worm with common roach uh, ground bait. We are clipped at 15 meter. Let's see how far this goes. Yeah, that's about right. Just slightly under full or 90% cast there. This rod, we're going to start off with maggots. Same ground bait roach. Um, what do we have? An eight on the first one hook wise. Ah, let's do that better. And then I'm not sure. This one might not cast quite as far. Ah, it's about the same. Um, and a 10 on the second one. And then we still have this crappy 14 on the third one. And we're actually just using worms here on this one. Just kind of want to see what different species we catch here. I think this might be a spot where we could hit some bream. Also, once it's now not overnight, uh, I think there's some good roach here. Uh, once the roach are more active, we'll be switching to caddisfly. And once we craft pearl barley, which we can do any time now, I just haven't done it yet because I hadn't hit record yet, we can switch to pearl barley and maybe even target the bream even better. So we'll see how this goes. But yeah, let me mention, um, so here it is, December 19th. Uh, so a couple things, um, you know, kids are out of school and I'm still having to work a good bit. Uh, and when I'm not working, I'm trying to spend as much time with the kids and family, you know, and my wife as much as we can. So, um, which has been great. I mean, we're having such a blast playing a lot of board games and uh, just having some good time together as we are enjoying the beginning of this Christmas holiday uh, time. So uh, I have not been as on top of doing the daily videos. You know, we had a lot of momentum going on this series. I don't necessarily want to lose momentum, but that is always a danger when other things come up and I step away for a bit. So that's why I was recording tonight, just to try to keep a little bit of that momentum. Now, I'm having to work tonight, so this even this could end up being a shorter video than I want uh, if it gets interrupted for that. But um, wait, what's our energy at? Yeah, let's dig one more time, then we're going to just start hitting pearl barley. I think we can make like 10 pearl barley right now. Is that how much we got? Oh, I still have a couple potatoes. Let's do that. Um, so the other thing that puts us a little bit in danger of losing momentum is I still think that it's very likely that in the new body of water, the new lake, the uh, new Ladoga Lake could come out this week. So when that happens, of course, I'll be spending some time giving, you know, some, some attention to that on my uh, main account. Um, I know somebody recently on a video asked like, hey, could you do some like hotspot videos? Not right now, uh, only because I'm into this leveling guide and I'm, I'm just into it enough to like, this is kind of where I want to spend my energy. Um, I will definitely do hotspot videos again soon. I mean, I, I will get back to that, but um, kind of pausing from that right now and just focusing on the leveling guide. Uh, but as soon as that new Ladoga map comes out, there'll be a lot to talk about, a lot to see, a lot to experience. So believe me, we'll be checking that out. And that could risk us losing some minimal momentum on this leveling guide too. But I, I, I'm hoping to be able to continue enough momentum where I, you know, we keep going at least a little and, um, you know, see this into the new year basically on this leveling guide. So there's a roach in the middle of the night on worms. Nice roach, nice size there. I'm gonna just throw this worm back out there. It's interesting, we haven't had a single bite yet on red worm, which I thought would do well here, or maggots, which I thought might do well here. Um, now we do have pretty big hook size, so that could be part of it. Oh, and red worms looks like just went off. So let's see what this is. Oh yeah, holy cow. This might be a this might be a bream actually. So anyway, I you know I say all that just to explain kind of why it's been a little less consistent the last few days after you know such a very consistent start to the series. Um, I do hope we can continue it. Christmas week, of course, is a little bit rough. The week after Christmas, though, probably can be a little more consistent on content. We'll see. Yeah, that is a bream, and that is very nice, 
nice to see that. If you can start like catching a few decent bream here while you're at Mosquito, before you even get to Oldberg, like that's just icing on the cake. I definitely want to switch this right now to, um, uh, to Pearl Barley. So excited that we have Pearl Barley unlocked now. Um, if you are kind of following along with me, new to the game or leveling an alt account or whatever, man, just get to that Pearl Barley as quick as you can. It is a, a big gainer. It's worth it for sure. Oh, that fish popped off. I'm going to keep worms out though. I, I've thought about going to two Pearl Barley, but worms has been my best bait so far. So I'm not going to change too much just yet. Not going to change just yet. Okay. So that was an achievement for catching our first fish on pearl barley, it looks like. And you see what happens here. A lot of, um, oh, it's a big rough. A lot of, uh, a lot of the time you'll see, okay, I'm going to switch to, I'm actually going to switch to caddis, no. Yeah, let's go to caddis fly on this one. Um, a lot of times, unfortunately, you know, you see a couple of decent bream, but a lot of the bream you see at Mosquito do tend to be smaller, but, um, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. I think though, as it gets to be five, 6 AM, hopefully we'll start to see more roach mixed in. And if we can catch some decent roach, that'll be nice. So the bream are eating up these worms right now, but they're very small. To be fair, we have a small hook on this one. This one thing we need to go ahead and bite the bullet, get another decent 10 to 8 size hook for this for this third rod as well all right here's a decent fish it seems like on pearl barley if it's a bream it may or may not be a marker it's going to be right in that like five to eight hundred gram size i think yeah not quite but that's okay we're you know we don't mind just doing some experimenting here just doing some experimenting. Kind of want to switch a second one to Caddisfly. I think the idea here is that Caddisfly, I uh, saw somebody posting about this on VK. Caddisfly is going to dodge the bream better than some of these other baits. So if you want to try to get some, you know, monster common roach, Caddisfly might be the way to go. Is that what this is? Or is it a, yeah, it is. See, look at that. Such a nice, nice size roach there. And again, we're at 15 meter clip right now. I think there might be a fish on this one. No, it's not this one, it's this one. Oh, that's probably a rough, huh? I don't think there was a cafe order for rough. I did glance really quick before I started recording. Oof. Uh, does anybody want another board game recommendation? Uh, last time I talked about, last time I talked about Seven Wonders Duel, which is a fantastic two-player game. I can't wait to hear from Relicade once he gets that, if he gets the chance to play that with his wife, what he thinks about it. But, uh, let me give you another recommendation, another small game, but this one is three to five players.
All right. So this is a three to five player board game that has been um, published by Cosmos. They make a lot of uh, nice board games. Their, their boxes, I think I always like how a Cosmos box looks. This one's called The Crew Mission Deep Sea. This is actually the second version of The Crew. I've not played the first uh, because once the second came out, I think it kind of makes the first one... Um, I mean, and, and, and from what I've heard, people love the first one. But the second one adds a couple of little changes that have I think people like a lot. So um, let's pull this fish in and then I'll tell you a little bit more about the crew. So, oh, it's on the caddis fly again. Nice. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a good roach, I think. Maybe six, 700 grams or still about 500. 567. Ooh, I like it. See, if you can just sit here and catch roach that size, I would argue it's a really nice fish to target, especially when you're around this level. Okay, the Crew Mission Deep Sea. This is a trick-taking card game uh, at its core. So, you know, if you're not into games like this, think about hearts or whatever trick-taking card game. I mean, there's lots of basic trick-taking card games, right? Um, you know, and what I mean by that is, you know, you're playing oftentimes with just a basic card deck, right? And whatever the rules of the trick-taking are, but, but typically, you know, someone will lead with one card, let's say the nine of diamonds, if you're using traditional cards, and then everyone else has to try to play that same suit, but they want to beat it by playing a higher number, right? And then if you don't have the suit, then you can sort of dump something else you don't want, or if there's some sort of uh, trump trump card, you know, whatever your trump is, then you might be able to take the trick even if you don't have the highest of that suit. Uh, and that is the at the core, that is what the crew mission deep sea uh, is about. I'm actually going to open this one up and show you some components. This was uh, Thomas Singh is the developer of this board game. And um, let me tell you, this is a banger of a game. Um, the kids and I are all in on this. We have been loving it. Uh, the twist that the crew brings is that, um, by the way, this is very inexpensive. It's a small little box, very inexpensive. You know, if it's on sale, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks, something like that on sale, maybe. I don't even know if the MSRP might be 20, might be less than that though. It might be 14.99, I'm not sure. We could look it up. You get a cool little token here if you're the captain. So the whole theme of this, it's a cooperative game, and uh, you're literally a crew, you know, diving, making these missions um, under the deep, into the deep of the ocean. Uh, but it's all based around trick-taking. Uh, here are the cards. Fantastic, cool little art on the cards. You may not be able to see it. Um, I don't know if you're going to really be able to, but so it doesn't have diamonds, clubs, all that kind of stuff. It's got four colors, blue, green, pink, and um, uh, yellowish color. Those are the four uh, suits, right? And then there's submarine cards that are, that are the Trump. But in the crew, you actually get missions. So based on how many players you're playing with and which mission you're on, um, there are certain objectives that you will have to uh, try to meet. And the whole purpose of the game is to try to meet these objectives. So like your objectives in one game is might be that whoever is the captain for that game um, has to win the first four tricks. And someone else's objective might be they have to win a six of any suit you know, by playing a seven or whatever. So you have these. So the cool thing about the crew is uh, it's not trick taking just for the sake of trick taking. It's trick taking with this cooperative mindset. Um, so like here's one of the mission cards. There's a ton of these. So there's so much replayability. I will win the first and last trick. I don't think that's going to be in focus, is it? 
anyway, that's one of the missions. And, and you sometimes you have several missions at the same time. So you literally are working together without communicating what's in my hand. And there are rules about communication and what that looks like. But how can we fulfill all of our objectives and make this a successful mission? So that's how it's co cooperative. Anyway, simple little game, easy to teach, hard to master. Very, it can be very tricky, especially if your group that you're playing with, if they're not familiar with trick taking, if your brain doesn't just sort of work in that way. Okay, I, I've taken up enough of your time with another board game review. I may work these in every once in a while, but I won't do it all the time. I do eventually want to tell you guys the game that we're playing, that the kids, that my wife, my two kids, and myself are playing. Uh, and we're, we've been playing it like crazy. It's a legacy game. That's the only hint I'll give you. But I'm going to wait till we're um, a couple more weeks, get a couple more time, get it to the table a few more times so I can fully develop my thoughts about it. But it's a big game. It's not like these smaller ones. So I may even need to make a video just about that. It's a little ridiculous to be sitting here fishing and trying to tell you about this big legacy game. But anyway, that's the crew. Hey, let me know if you've heard of the crew, either the original or the sequel. Again, I invite any kind of board game talk. I'm a little obsessed about board games at the moment. So anyway, Okay, so how have we done fishing here? What I've liked are the roach, right? Like I said, now that the sun's up, we're catching roach. I actually am thinking about changing this out to caddisfly. Uh, let's see what we call it here. And then maybe changing the worm one to pearl barley so we can continue to see what pearl barley produces. But in this spot, like we don't want to catch tiny bream, right? We want to be catching these roach. So we're going to do it. We're going to go, it might even be worth going caddisfly three across. Um, but we'll put we'll put pearl barley on the third one for now. I feel like since we just unlocked pearl barley, it'd be a shame not to use it a lot, right? Or use it some. Hey, that's a nice roach. Again, worm might be the way to go, but worm's a little boring. We'll see how pearl barley does. We'll see how pearl barley does. Uh, Tinka Kick says leveling guide episode 10 the roach approach I guess that is kind of what this is turning into I appreciate that very kind okay man what did a fish get away on? Probably this one. Yeah. So that's interesting. Like a roach just so quiet and silent just stole my bait. The cool thing, I don't know that it's in stock here at Mosquito, but right now Caddisfly is in stock at um, Winding, the cheapest amount. So it's like eight silver for 30. But because of the size roach we're catching, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think we'll, you know, make back three or four times that much per 30 caddisfly, maybe more. Uh, some nice chunky roach coming out right now, though. They might get a little small once it gets a little later in the day. We'll see. If that's the case, that's okay. But as long as they're markers, I really don't care. Like, the bite rate right now is great. Continuing to make some XP, definitely making some silver. Somebody said that, uh, Again, Tinka Kick says two little feeders pulling in roach nonstop and a speeder for fun. Just asking if they were doing that at Mosquito or Winding. If you're using a little speeder, like a little spin fisher for your third, then I might think that doing that at Winding would be more fun if there's a good spot where you can catch roach and spin fish at the same time. But maybe you could make that work here at Mosquito too. Oh, Belaya and Bourbon at Night. Oh yeah, no, that's great. If you're at Belaya, that's awesome. Man, 
We are about to level up on common roach, I feel like. I feel like that is the case. Bet you there's a fish on that first one. What is this, by the way? Is this really a roach? I mean, it was stubborn, heavy, did not want to come up. It is a roach, man. That is a roach and a half. Yes, I am a roach. Hey, trophy number two. Trophy number two. So that was Caddisfly with common roach mix. That's funny. It didn't show the fish in chat, but it showed me hitting level 12. Well, good. Maybe there's somebody in chat that's going to watch this episode. And that trophy will be a surprise. You will be surprised. We literally ought to call this episode The Roach Approach. That's such a good idea. The Roach Approach. I'm going to put that in my chat over here so I don't forget it. The Roach Approach. What is that? There's a, there's a movie called The Roach Approach? the main event i'm nervous i don't even know what that i just don't know what that is but anyway the roach approach all right which one's it on okay yeah that's scary level 12. we can start going places that we might not be ready for. We can start going to the places we might not be prepared for. Goodness, we are catching some nice roach here. Yeah, the bream. The bream. That's why caddisfly is the bait, because it's you're just trying to dodge these tiny bream, right? It's funny, the bream was bigger than our trophy roach. hope that they're go they're planning on doing some kind of uh, Christmas New Year's event like I've said before I I assume that we're gonna see the Christmas Fair I mean I just can't imagine them skipping a year on the Christmas Fair right Christmas New Year's Fair but I hope that they still do that event like they did last year especially for new players that weren't here last year 
Like it's just such a fun little event. You have a chance to get some nice presents. Let's hope. Of course, I would love to see some variety with the event. I don't think it has to be the exact same event, but something similar to that or something um, reminiscent of that would be nice. Somebody in chat asked, what size hook would people recommend for Burbot? And Inna said 2.0, and that's true. Uh, I said, I said big, in, you know, large one on up, which is kind of what I feel like, is that I would at least use large one size hook. But one aughts all the way up is also an option. Also says I've had a couple of big ones slip. That might be a hook quality issue. I don't know what quality hooks you're running. There's a lot of factors that can cause fish to slip off the hook though. But if you're using really, really low quality hooks or cheap hooks, then that's the first thing I would try to adjust. Twenty three point three percent. Ooh, something's pulling on that pearl barley, huh? I mean, pulling. Pearl barley. This has got to be like another one and a half kilo bream, I would think. This, you know, this feels completely different than that trophy roach, right? It's a pretty decent fish though. I mean, even now that it's not fighting, it's still the size of it is, it's hefty. Man, I thought it was closer than that. Yeah, it's a bream. Just a late morning bream. Woo, 2.165. A nice one. That is a nice one. That is a nice one. So this is the kind of spot where you can just fish 24/7. Just change your baits according to what time it is or what you want to catch or don't want to catch. I mean, I'm you know obviously you could fish the spot out. I'm not saying do that, but. You probably get a couple hours out of this one every day and do pretty well here at mosquito and you know we were seeing rough and we weren't even targeting them so it's also possible that if you had a rough cafe order this might not be a bad bad spot to look into
I mean, I think at this point in the day, we can say they're not dying off. We're catching nice size roach actually like all day here, you know? And so roach may not feel like something you want to target, but if you're low level and you can catch them most of the day and then at night maybe you can get a couple lucky bream or rough if you wanted to switch switch it up to rough whatever like it adds up you know it just adds up I think if, you know, all things being equal, maybe Crucian Gibbles can be worth more than Roach. I mean, I think that is the case, but you have so much of the day where your Crucian Gibbles are going to be like less than marker size in a lot of spots. In fact, they're going to be best overnight. So if you can hit a few, little bit of the overnight hours, catch some fat Crucian Gibbles, this is your really low level. And then during the day, hit like a spot like this where you can catch marker size Roach just all day. I mean... What are we even doing here? This is great. This is a great approach. It's action packed. I mean, we're at 45 fish in 28 minutes. <clears throat> this is the kind of experience you want new players to have to just enjoy their time, you know, see the progression, even like this, to have a chance at this trophy coming out. It's awesome. Now the caddis fly, that can be frustrating if it's out of stock. So maybe that's the only caveat. Not that we couldn't have really good results with other baits, but you're going to get more trash bream during the day if you don't have the caddis fly, I think. But there's a lot of baits out there, so there might be other options too. I mean, peas... You know, how would peas work here? I just don't know. Lately, it doesn't... Used to, peas would kill Big Roach. I loved it. But I haven't necessarily felt like lately it's been quite as good. I mean, we'll throw in a pea right now. We'll pee it up right now. But, I mean, I don't think it's going to be anything like Caddisfly. Probably not like Pearl Barley either. Somebody in chat just caught a white spotted char. Forgot those fish were even in this game. Those are one of those Yama species, right? Fifteen meter clip casting towards the eight meter hole. That's all we're doing. Oh, 
Oh, I'm glad I didn't pick that up too early because that's our first fish on peas. So again, I think, you know, we could probably sit here and catch roach on peas. Oh, that's a small bream. Again, a bait that catches bream as well. It's the only problem, right? Seems like caddisfly is still the best answer. I mean, imagine how good we'd be doing if we had caddisfly on all three. Just forget the bream, and, and during the day at least. I mean, that's what you want to do. I'm using pearl barley because we just unlocked it, and I love using pearl barley, but obviously the ideal approach right now seems like it would be three caddisfly and just pull in, you know, 50, 500-gram roach. <laughs> you know, just take it to the bank. Just, you know, consistently make whatever silver per day. I'll be interested to see what this looks like at the cafe, not the cafe, the fish market um, here in a minute. We'll wrap this up soon, but kind of see how, see how this, how this looks. All day long, you know, also leveling up bottom fishing because we're catching so many like high quality roach just keep getting those points we are so close now to um being able to use boilies and stuff like not that we want to go for big carp or anything but sometimes it can be fun to use boilies to try to catch you know other things white bream uh even bream tench sometimes i mean you know this is sometimes you can do some creative fun stuff with boilies so it's nice to unlock that and have that as an option. You don't want to go crazy purchasing a bunch of boilies. It's expensive, but you know, for one thing, like one experiment at a time can be a blast. We're at 65 silver. We did buy a bunch of like ingredients um, to make all that pearl barley. We've got some oatmeal ingredients to make a few oatmeal, potatoes, um, but, I mean, we're easily going to make, what, another maybe 50, 75 silver? I don't know. Decent amount of silver just doing this for a little while. So, I think, hopefully I'm not overestimating what we've done here. Such a high percentage of markers. I mean, it's at least 40 markers, right? That's got to be 60 silver. Unless, unless roach sell for less than I remember. I don't know. Big boy and on pearl barley. You know, I was just going to say a minute ago, like how far down the roach list do you have to go to get to pearl barley? Well, the answer now is just two. <laughs> now, I think most of these will be caddisfly at the top. That was worm. That was pearl barley again, caddisfly. So pearl barley is catching some good ones. You just catch some some like undersized bream mixed in, right? I actually think it might be interesting to leave worm on a third one instead of pearl barley for this spot right now. 
Uh, I think percentage-wise worm, it would still catch some bream, but less than the pearl barley does. So that might be interesting. Catch a little bit more wider variety of fish, but still a lot of roach probably. Just depends on what all's really active in this spot. All right, so we've been fishing for 37 minutes. We'll go a bit longer. Has slowed down. Is that time of day? Well, it doesn't really make sense with the actual time of day it is, but 17.5. It is still at the like, it's pretty hot. Although overall, this was not a super hot day. Three point five. How much pearl barley have we made? We need to make a good bit of pearl barley because we'll fish through a lot of pearl barley at Old Berg, most likely for bream. There's some baits you're kind of like, ah, oh, do I want to make a thousand of whatever? But pearl barley, I wouldn't really worry about it. So we're only at two ninety two. You know, I'm happy to make 500 pearl barley, especially if this was obviously if my main account and I was leveling up. Make as much pearl barley as you need to to keep moving that percentage up higher on bait harvesting. Oatmeal, I don't want to make 500 or 1,000 oatmeal, just 100 or so probably. Uh, unless it, you know, sometimes oatmeal will pop up and be a good bait, but it's not as consistent. Now what comes after pearl barley? Sweet dough, make plenty of sweet dough. Sweet dough's great. Wheat grain every once in a while, but I would, I would not make a ton of wheat grain. It's very expensive now. It's been reworked a little bit and it's very expensive. Tons of semolina, maybe not as much as sweet dough and pearl barley. I would rank sweet dough, a semolina a little under them, but it can still be really good at times. Garlic dough, I mean, just go ahead and make 5,000 garlic dough. And don't and don't feel bad about it. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's number one, especially for bream fishing. Uh, there will be times when garlic dough is just king. Cheese cubes make a lot of cheese. You'll use it. It's fine. Cottage cheese right there with garlic dough. Pea porridge right there with garlic. I mean, these three in terms of bream: pea porridge, cottage cheese, and garlic dough. Egg dough. You know, you may end up making about a hundred thousand egg dough, but that's okay. Uh, it's because it's cheap. So people end up leveling up all the way to a hundred percent primarily on egg dough because it's so cheap compared to when you get to like polenta honey dough. And then this stuff down here is not consistent enough to level up on if you want to level up aggressively. I don't know why we had a little bit of a pause there where it wasn't as active, but it feels like whatever that was, it's over it now. We're getting back into the little more active time here. I was kind of wanting to swing them a little farther left. I mean, it's been doing great the way I've been aiming, but I have been aiming slightly west more than I intended. Like, I don't think it'll matter, but
very quiet. If we could crouch walk back over to our poles, I would. You know, we're still making pretty good uh, XP progress right now. I mean, look at how far into 12 we are. And we just hit 12 this episode. And this is just fishing here at Mosquito. Again, you never, when you're new to the game or early in the game, getting experience faster is never what you need, right? You're not going to be able to afford the gear that you need to go to the places that you're unlocking by leveling fast. What we're going to have to figure out, and I'll try to keep my eyes and ears open on spots, but if you know of a great spot right now, Belaya, by the way, but I would like to go at least see, poke my head in Belaya one of these episodes now that we can. And, um, you know, see if this Aquila does anything there on this very, very, very light setup. It'll be scary, but it might be fun. Obviously on Roach, we're not getting much experience per fish. It's just the volume of it. That's the what's so amazing. Have we had a single Roach that has been less than marker size? Like, I don't think so. But I could be wrong. That's a negatory. Six. No. Wait. Is that 39? 39 rough, 100% marker size? Wow. Wowzers. Got our Paternoster rigs out. We're slaying Roach. I would say, and we're not gonna keep going once it's like night overnight again, but I would say once it's overnight though, switch gears. Either go rough or bream in this spot. I think the roach bite, bite rate will just drop off dramatically once it gets late enough. So you want to embrace the occasional marker bream or embrace the small fish, try to catch a bunch of rough or something. Probably only if there's a cafe order on the rough 
If there's no cafe order, probably go bream. Hey, look at that. That's scary. <laughs> we, we don't want no mirror carp. How did a fish get away that fast? Let's see if which line it was. It's that one. That was quick. Couldn't have been on there long. The rod hadn't been back in the water that long. Something slipped off the hook quick, though. So what would we do? Pearl barley on two, worm on one, something like that. Maybe we'll do that, you know, if, if next episode we decide to fish here again. In this spot, maybe we'll try that overnight. See if how that does. See if pearl barley works here. Worm may just work better here on bream. I feel like pearl barley for bream at least. You start seeing it excel at old berg more so than, than mosquito, but we'll see. We'll test it a bit. See if we can get one more fish here and we'll start packing up for the night. We do need to start leveling up ground bait pretty soon. We're at that point where, you know, we're starting to get some momentum on uh, bait harvesting, right? But now we need to start really getting aggressive with uh, ground bait too. All right, don't be a roach. Don't mess up our winning streak here. Thank you. Thank you. All we've been doing is winning with roach, so I don't want to start losing all of a sudden. Not quite marker size, right? Just under marker size bream. Mm. All right. Oof. What was that, a nibble? Was that a nibble? It was indeed a nibble. All right, perfect. 75 fish. In 51 minutes. It's insane. I love it. Just what I'm talking about. Action packed. We need to check the cafe, but first I, I want to just get a good read of what this really looks like at the cafe. I mean, because, you know, we've gone through 44 caddis fly, right? And we have. I don't know.
just over 40 roach, 44, 45, I don't know. So the majority were caught on caddis fly. Obviously, we had a couple on worm, and we had a few on pearl, pearl barley. Um, all right, all the fish. Wow. Guys, that is some silver. At this level, less than an hour. Dang. Okay. So... The roach themselves were worth 88. And remember, we spent 12 silver on 60 caddisfly. So, no problem there. Even though all of them weren't caught on caddisfly, the majority were, and we didn't use up all of those caddisfly. So, no brainer. Uh, this is where it gets frustrating, right? You're one bream short. But that's okay. We did well enough that I'm not even complaining. Now, let's see this. I think this will be worth it. I know it will. We'll, we'll double check. It's not about to run out, is it? No, we'll double check. So the five smallest roach, nine silver, barely worth it. Because see, look at this. This is a small roach order. So any size would work. But that's still slightly better. Now this is 38 silver. I mean, all we gotta sit there and catch is one more one kilo bream. If I had time, I would do it. Obviously that's a no brainer, it's worth it. We're at 175 silver. So, one thing we're gonna be doing next episode is purchasing a little something. Wait, what? Has it been, has it not been a full hour? Yeah, there we go. We're going to be purchasing the feeder rod start. This is a great value. 149 silver. Comes with the Comma Comfort, the Lacerti 4000S, which we've already been using on one of our lines. Crappy hook. You know, it's whatever. But. It's a good value. These two right here, it's worth it. You can't go wrong with this setup. This will get you fish and bream. It's going to be uncomfortable if the bream are like three kilos and up, but you can do it. And uh, for next to no silver in the big picture. So we'll be getting that next time. All right. As always, thanks for watching. Merry Christmas, everyone. I suspect that if you are a fan of this channel and you uh, check out the videos when they come out i suspect you will hear from me again before christmas day itself maybe multiple times but uh in case i don't see you again please you know hear me say merry christmas to you and yours and uh, as always thanks for the support thanks for being here the roach approach tight lines everybody <laughs>